All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, on Sunday we have the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, and I'm going to be totally honest with you, I'm not really looking forward to this thing. I mean, I feel like this just, like, WWE at this moment is just not good, guys. Monday Night Raw is the worst it's ever been, in my opinion. SmackDown Live is not much better, and it is just not good television right now. There is just nothing going on that I really care about. On Monday Night Raw, it's Seth Rollins and Ziggler and McIntyre and maybe one other person on the entire show. Maybe Kevin Owens that I care about. I do care about Finn Balor, but my God, they just book him into the ground. He literally has no direction. I mean, same thing with Kevin Owens, but I do still care for those guys. And then on SmackDown Live, I, I mean, like Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, Rusev, and I mean, that is pretty much it, guys. There's literally just no, nothing's happening right now. I'm just not very excited. But usually... When I go into a pay-per-view with no expectations, they actually really do deliver. So hopefully that's what happens here with Extreme Rules. We do have 11 matches to cover, and a lot of them I'm not really looking forward to. But you know what? I'm going to give you my best opinions on the matches and everything. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into them. So starting out with the pre-show, guys, we have the New Day taking on Sanity of Eric Young, Alexander Wolf, and Killian Dane in a six-man I, I consider it six man. I mean, you know, both teams have three people. It's a good feud right here. I would consider it a six man tag team. I hope that's the case. In a tables match, and um, I don't know really why this is taking place. I don't think this has had very much build at all. I guess they just said, you know what, we'll take these two teams, stick them on the pre show with the tables match. Both teams just not deserving of the pre show, but uh, it is a tables match, and I am looking forward to this matchup. You know, it is a good tag team match if you're, or a pre show match. If you're going to have one like this, and I expect Sanity to go over. Hopefully that is the case. You know, I think that if these guys were given time on the main show and, you know, had a great build, I think this would be a fantastic matchup. But I'm going to go with Sanity winning this thing to start off our show. Next up, we have a singles match between Finn Balor and Constable Corbin or Trash Corbin or Baron Corbin or whatever the crap Corbin. Uh, another matchup that I don't care about, I mean, I love my boy Finn Balor right here, and I cannot stand Trash Corbin, so I'm going to be cheering for Finn really hard right here, but didn't we just see a similar feud in Daniel Bryan and Big Cass? You know, all all this feud is is Baron Corbin saying, you know, you're small, I'm way bigger than you, and Finn Balor's like, okay, well, I'll show you what I'm made of. So this is literally a rehash of Daniel Bryan and Big Cass, so that's sort of crappy. I don't like that at all, but uh, I'm going to go with Finn Balor to pick up the victory I hope to God, after Baron Corbin has had multiple wins and pins over Finn Balor, Finn Balor desperately needs this, and I'm going to go with Balor. Next up, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Deleters of Worlds and the B Team. Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy taking on Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. And uh, I feel like I've seen this match 162 times being from the build. I feel like we saw Matt Hardy versus one of these guys eight times. We saw, you know, a bunch of interactions between these two teams. And I'm pretty much just over this. I'm just ready for the match to take place. Hopefully it's a lot better than expected. I love, you know, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt individually. But um, I just, I don't know. I want this match to be good. It's just been a lot of fluke victories and a lot of crap. I'm pretty sure the Deleters of Worlds are going to retain here. You know, the B team have had their little, you know, 15 seconds of fame. They're going to move on, and we're going to get the Authors of Pain uh, going into SummerSlam versus the Deleters of Worlds. So I'm going with Matt and Bray to retain. Next up, we have a steel cage match between my boy Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman. And this feud has been nothing but Braun Strowman just tipping over stuff. You know, he destroyed the porta potty with Kevin Owens inside. He flipped his rent a car. He has just been all over Kevin Owens. He, you know, we thought they were going to be friends and teaming up for a week. Uh, that quickly changed, and Braun is just on a tear right now, beating the crap out of Kevin Owens. I hope my boy Kevin Owens can pull up the victory. Beings as you know, Braun Strowman's looked very, very strong in this feud. He's got the money in the bank briefcase. Literally, him losing, you know, by accident. I feel that they should go with like that Stone Cold Steve Austin spot, you know, where. Big Show threw Stone Cold into the cage and like the cage broke open and you know uh, Stone Cold swung and landed on the outside to win the matchup. I could see something similar with this. I am looking forward to this matchup. Um, I'm pretty hyped because I love Kevin Owens. I like Braun Strowman. I think this should be pretty freaking nice. So I think that Braun Strowman should take Kevin Owens, throw him into the side of the cage. It will open up and then Kevin Owens will win so that way you still have Braun looking strong and Kevin Owens can finally get a dub. Next we have the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between Team Hell No and the Bludgeon Brothers. Harper and Rowan taking on Daniel Bryan and Kane. 
And uh, we finally have the reunion of Team Hell No right here. I think they're going to win the championships. I'm going to go with Team Hell No taking the SmackDown Live tag titles off the Bludgeon Brothers. And uh, we'll probably have a rematch or a triple threat tag team match going into SummerSlam, I'm pretty sure. If Daniel Bryan and Kane lose, that makes me worried that Kane and Daniel Bryan will end up in a match at SummerSlam. And that's just beneath Daniel Bryan. I don't like that at all. Uh, I don't think The Miz is going to get involved. I would have predicted that, but he's going to be at the MLB All-Star Game on the same night as Extreme Rules, so I don't think he'll be able to make it, obviously, because they're in separate cities, I'm pretty sure. So uh, I'm going to go with Team Hell No, and then I don't know where they go from here. I wanted to see, you know, something better for Daniel Bryan at SummerSlam, but I guess that's not what's going to happen. Next up, we have the United States Championship match between Jeff Hardy and Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't know why this match doesn't have a stipulation. I know we haven't had guys really interacting at all but there's a lot of matches on this card that just aren't extreme guys you have some that are but some that aren't why even call the pay-per-view extreme rules if you're not going to have all stipulation matches but we have my boy jeff hardy right here and i just feel like that would have been a great way to do a ladder match or a tlc match or some sort of table match just anything besides a singles match i don't know why they did that but I'm going to go with Shinsuke Nakamura. I think they're going to put the championship on Shinsuke Nakamura. I think there's some rumors going around that Jeff needs to uh, take some time off. So he may take a month off, get all his uh, injuries recovered, and be back for SummerSlam, I believe. So maybe that's what's going to be happening. I'm not sure. But I'm going to go with Shinsuke Nakamura taking the United States Championship. Even though he doesn't deserve it, I don't think he deserves this at all, guys. You know, he's lost so many matches in a row. So that doesn't give him any place to have this United States Championship match right here. He hasn't done anything to deserve it. It should be somebody like Almas or, I don't know, a fresh face. I don't think he should be in this matchup, but I'm going with him to win the championship. Next up, we have the Intercontinental Championship match between my boy Dolph Ziggler taking on Seth freaking Rollins with Drew McIntyre in Dolph Ziggler's corner in a 30-minute Ironman match for the title. And this match is going to be freaking phenomenal, guys. I mean, we already know. I hope that uh, it lives up to the expectations, and I totally believe it will with Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler, two of the best in-ring workers in the entire world, let alone WWE. I think they're going to tear the house down. I'm going match of the night, hands down. Maybe we'll get a five-star match out of Dave Meltzer and the Wrestling Observer or anybody like that. But uh, I'm going to go with Dolph Ziggler retaining the championship. I want, you know, Seth Rollins to move on to the main event. I would love to see Dolph Ziggler run on the main event. There's actually a rumor going around that uh, after this feud, there's supposed to be Drew McIntyre versus Dolph Ziggler down the road, and then uh, Dolph Ziggler's supposed to be a babyface, and they're both supposed to be in the main event. So it's going to be uh, a Ziggler main event push as a face, and then a heel Drew as a, uh, you know, a main event guy as well. So hopefully that all takes place, but I'm going to go with Ziggler picking up the win, retaining the championship in an epic match, and I think that they're going to definitely burn the house down. Next up, we have the big dog Roman Reigns taking on Bobby Lashley in a singles match. Now, you would think that this would have a stipulation, given that they had that big old brawl on Monday Night Raw, and this match has been completely forced. This match has been just terribly built, guys. It's just... Bobby Lashley on the microphone is literally probably the worst thing I've ever heard. If you hear Bobby Lashley on the microphone, it's very similar to how Baron Corbin... Why I hate Baron Corbin is pretty much why I am disliking uh, Bobby Lashley right now, guys. The freaking tone that he uses on the microphone is so like robotic and lackluster it's like he's like i don't know sleepwalking or something it sounds so terrible i do not enjoy him on the mic at all he does not sound serious he makes roman sound like a bad a on the microphone because when they're going back and forth it's obvious that roman's way better on the microphone but I think, uh, I hope this match is better than, you know, I, I think it's going to be. But I'm going to go with Bobby Lashley picking up the victory. This is obviously an unofficial number one contenders match for the Universal Championship. Whoever wins this is obviously going to go on to fight Brock at SummerSlam, most likely. I'm going to go with Bobby Lashley. You know, I just think that's the way they're going to go with it. Uh, I honestly do not care who wins. I don't care about this matchup. I'm just ready for the Universal title to be on Monday Night Raw every week. I'm sick of Brock Lesnar. I'm just ready to get it on and get it over with and just, yeah, let's move on. And for our main event, even though it is rumored that this match is not going to be the main event, apparently Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns is going to be the main event, which I think is complete BS. You're totally making your WWE Championship look weak. Uh, hopefully this match main events, I don't think it will. 
But uh, I'm going to hold on to faith and, you know, try and just see if AJ Styles can finally main event a freaking pay-per-view as WWE Champion. But uh, finally, Rusev getting his moment in the sun in a WWE Championship match with AJ Styles. I hope he uses this opportunity to prove to the people in the back that he can go, that he can be a main event player. Obviously, Aiden English will be by his side out there. And uh, I expect some good things from this matchup. Both of these guys can work so well with the thrown-in factor of Aiden English. I think that it's going to be a great one, a very entertaining match indeed. Obviously, AJ Styles working with anybody but Shinsuke Nakamura is going to be a good one. So I am very happy uh, to see this matchup. I can't wait for it. And I'm going to go with AJ Styles retaining the championship. It just wouldn't make sense for Rusev to be WWE Champion going into SummerSlam. I just don't think they're going to give him that big of a moment. And, you know, uh, have him as WWE Champion going into SummerSlam. I just don't see it. I think the crowd will be electric for this one. I think that uh, AJ Styles is most definitely going to retain here. So I'm going to go with AJ Styles. But I want Rusev to just put it all out there. I want him to have a great showing so that in future ref or future cases, he can get more opportunities like this. I cannot wait to see what he brings to the table. And I'm very excited for it. But that pretty much does it for your entire Extreme Rules 2018 predictions, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, not very much looking forward to this pay-per-view, but usually when I think that, they deliver uh, way past my expectations. So hopefully that happens here, and um, I hope the matches that I'm hoping to be great are great, and uh, hopefully the matches that I'm not looking forward to uh, go above and beyond my expectations. But that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure-related videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I will be live tweeting during Extreme Rules, so definitely check that out on Sunday. I will see you guys in the next video.